Okay, this video is going to go over how to do math in the shell. Um, so when we're doing math in the shell, there's uh, three different ways I know how to do math in the shell. One of them is to use the expr command, which uh, is a separate command that runs outside the shell. So you can notice we have that the expression inside backticks, which you hopefully remember means run this command. Um, and then we put the mathematic operation we want. So in this case, I have 5 plus 2. 5 plus 2. 5 plus 10. The next way I know how to do math in the shell is to use let, which you say let answer to equal 7 plus 4. Um, that's going to do that math operation. And the third way is to enclose the math operation inside uh, double parentheses with a dollar sign in front of it. So this is a third way you can do math in the shell. So let's go ahead and uh, run, run this, see that it works. So there we go. I did math. I did those three maths. EXPR, answer to equals, let answer to equals 7 plus 4, and then answer 3 equals dollar sign 12 plus 9. So that's how you can do math, although that's not very exciting as far as our quest to become scripting masters because uh, most of the time you're going to have those values inside variables. So very rarely, I would think, are we going to actually hard code numbers in there. So I have another math script we're going to look at called math bars. And in this one, I have some uh, variables. If we look uh, at the very beginning of the script, I'm getting the, the numbers I want to add or subtract or whatever I'm going to do with them from the command line. I'm setting num1 equals dollar $1 and num2 equals dollar $2. And then I am doing some math on those numbers. So in this case, I'm using expr. So it's inside the back ticks. Once again, mention that. In this case, we need the dollar signs on the variables because we need to reference the value. For let, we have the variables in there, but if you'll notice with let, the dollar signs are not included on the variables. So I say let answer two equal num1 minus num2, but there's no dollar signs. Uh, answer three is num1 times num2. Uh, if you notice here, there are no dollar signs, and down here when I'm solving answer four, there are dollar signs. So the double parentheses lets you do it either way. So in this case, I have num1 times uh, num2, and then num1 uh, divided by num2. So for division, it should be noted this is decimal division. You will not get the remainder. So once we solve this, once we uh, put some numbers in there to see what happens, we'll, we'll talk about that again. So in this case, I'm going to go run my math bars, math bar script. And I'm going to give it 10 and 6. So in this case, answer 1 was addition. We have 16, 10 plus 6, answer 2. Subtraction, 10 minus 6 is 4. Multiplication. 10 times 6 is 60, and then for division, I got 1, because 6 will go into 10 one time. Uh, there's a remainder, but we, we don't get that remainder with uh, that kind of that kind of division. If you need to, to do decimal, uh, non, if you need to include uh, decimal points, you have to do it in a different way. So, um, I also went ahead and put some more examples in my code. I don't want to show them to you yet. If we look... I had an exit in there to exit. So here is here's some examples of how to solve the different problem, different problem types with expr and let and with the double parentheses. So if we look at the expr way, basically you just do the same thing every time. The one thing we need to note if you're using doing multiplication uh, with expr, we need to put the backslash in front of the star. To protect it from the shell because we remember from our wildcard basics that gets expanded by the shell to include all the directories in your home directory. This uh, operator is called the modulus operator. It gets the remainder. So in this case we put 10 and 6, the remainder is going to be 4. So that gives you the remainder of, of what's left over after you do the division. Here's we, we're solving the problems with let. There's no special escape needed there. If we notice we don't have the dollar signs on the values and then down here we're solving the same problems with the double double parentheses way. In this case, I have the dollar signs on the values, but like, like we said above, that is not required. So now if I go ahead and run my math bar script again, we see that we solve the problems with all with uh, three different ways um, to solve the problem. So which one should you use? Whichever one you want, really. I would probably say I would probably say I would probably use the double parentheses ways. 
I never used that before because when I first started scripting, the, the scripts I was working on used express expression to do math. And then I learned about let, so I started using let some. I'd never done it this way, but if I was starting out, I would do it this way. Because I can either have the have the dollar signs or not have the dollar signs. So that makes it uh, easier to not screw up. This is the way I would not do it because this is probably least efficient because it has to call an external program to do the math for you. So it has to spawn a subshell, run this program, and then return the, the value back. So I probably would not do it that way. I would probably uh, do it this way or using let. Let always forget if I need the dollar signs or don't need the dollar signs. So I have to look that up every time or try it with them and then try it without them. So yeah, so to summarize, I would probably do it one of these two ways if I was uh, starting learning now and wanted to do math in the shell. So that's how we can do math in the shell uh, to calculate things.